welcome back uh, to uh, part two of our starting with design lecture. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, this is all about uh, developing your model, um, starting to uh, create some custom elements um, to uh, make your design uh, unique and interesting. And uh, anyway, uh, this time, uh, this time around, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, creating uh, custom stairs, and um, which can be a real dramatic flair in a project. Really, kind of an interesting thing. Um, but uh, what you'll want to do uh, when you're working on your model, now that you're really developing the design um, to a full-on schematic. Um, you might want to hide some of these elements here just to make it easier to work, okay? And now that the designs are more complicated, um, you may have a little trouble using the view template. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, because I can't hide these elements, they're part of, uh, their visibility is defined by the view template. Um, so uh, you'll have to go to your view properties here. And uh, here, maybe I'll close the project browser so you can see it a little bit. And if you remember uh, from uh, previous uh, lectures, we used a view template to get this nice um, poche. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and select the view template uh, option and just choose none and hit apply and OK. And what that does, it leaves it all the visibility the way it was, but it's not, no longer locked by the template. And that means if I want to hide some elements, so for example, I want to hide all these sections for now, I can right click on them and choose hide category um, and I can kind of get rid of them. Uh, same with these uh, interior elevation symbols. I'm going to uh, choose hide and view. Um, category. By the way, you can also repeat whatever your last um, uh, uh, command was, and that's uh, super uh, helpful if you've you know gone through sort of several sub menus. Um, you can repeat it pretty quickly. So let's talk about creating a custom stair, uh, and we've we've been uh, through this before. Uh, we have tried making a stair um, just using the basic tools. Um, that are available. Um, basically, the, the sort of uh, simplest way is to just sketch the run of stairs, which is uh, what we did before. Um, so you click the run tool um, and sketch the direction of the stair, and, and this can be at an angle, and uh, Revit is more than happy to tell you how many risers you've created. Um, and then you can, you can continue uh, the, uh, the stair in any direction you want, okay? Um, and what's nice about this particular thing is you can uh, method is you can you can modify it as needed um, to create additional uh, treads. You can change the uh, width of the stair runs just by clicking on the stair run and kind of using the the draggers, um, the adjusters to adjust it. You can even create you know to a certain extent um, some custom um, landings. Okay. Um, uh, you can even rotate the, um, the, the tread, uh, the uh, run of stairs, um, if you decide that you, you, know, you want to modify it. Here, I'll just click check on here. Um, oh, and I, I guess I shouldn't have extended it beyond the top. That was silly. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at one of these views here to see what that stair looks like. Of course, I don't have a hole in the ceiling. Um, and, uh, and in fact, I don't have a number of things, including uh, the handrails that you need um, by code. Um, so we'll, we'll have to make sure that we find a, a railing. Let's see, a guardrail. Um, I forget which one of these has the handrail. There we go. That one has the handrail uh, in addition to the guardrail. Okay, well, all right, so that's, that's terribly um, exciting, uh, but let's create some uh, more custom things. Um, first of all, uh, Revit allows you, when you're creating a stair, there are, um, a, is a spiral stair option. Um, in fact, these two, the center ends spiral and the full step spiral, basically work in the same way, which is you click a center point, um, and then you define a radius um, for the stair, okay? Uh, if you uh, if your radius is very small, the stair will kind of overlap itself. Um, you see how it, it starts to look a little confusing. Um, let me just click the checkbox here and let Revit go through. And Revit saying that's a hard stair to make. Um, oh, there it is coming up. That's the second floor. In fact, let me uh, rename some of these views here. 
um, second floor view to front so that I can figure out where I am. I, I can never remember which view is which. Uh, let's see, this one is, uh, we'll rename this street level view to front, okay? Um, just to make my life a little easier. Um, you can see the stair is, is pretty windy. In fact, I'm, I'm not entirely sure I've got the, the head clearance here um, to make this work. So let's go back to the street level plan. Um, and, uh, whoops, come on, delete that guy. You can delete the railings separately, by the way. Um, you can also, uh, uh, by the way, here, let me just uh, switch uh, windows to, uh, I have the uh, stair samples and the railing samples files um, that I have posted. These are from good old Autodesk, um, and they're real handy if you have a stair type that you, you want your stair to be. Uh, let's pick, oh, I don't know, something a little, little wacky here, uh, you know, something like this. Um, somebody has spent the time to create these. Uh, you can use control C to copy these in and just switch to your uh, drawing. Uh, my screen is a little small, so it, it has minimized this down arrow. For most of you, your screens are big enough that this down arrow, uh, allowing you to switch drawings um, quickly, uh, should be visible. Uh, anyway, and I'll just paste in the stair. There may be some duplicating uh, duplicate elements. Here's the uh, stair. Uh, and now once it's in your drawing, I'll just click finish. Um, uh, I can create a new stair using this uh, what is it? assembled stair residential spiral with stringer. So that becomes available when you go and create a new stair. Um, so you might check those out. It is uh, quite uh, complicated to create a uh, custom stair um, but let's see, if I just create one uh, using a run, you should see that, um, oh, here we go, uh, you should see that the residential spiral with stringer is available. Okay, um, so uh, our last uh, option here for creating a stair is to just totally sketch it. Uh, and that's a fun way to create a stair. You can, you can do some wacky stuff. And, and the way it works, first of all, I'll just show the... Uh, area up here, you define the boundary of the stair, you define the uh, riser spacing uh, just by drawing lines, uh, and then you uh, tell Revit which way the stair is going. Okay, And remember those can be flipped um, after. So, uh, and any of the drawing tools are allowed. So, you know, I can have uh, one edge that is um, a straight line. Now, of course, I have no idea how many stairs this is, uh, how many uh, treads and risers this is going to create. Um, I'll just do a partial uh, stair here for the, for the fun of it. Um, and you can you can uh, define these boundaries again any which way you want. This is a decorative stair, so you know we can have some fun with it. Um, I can even have uh, curved edges, okay. Um, and you can also uh, have it uh, splay at the bottom. Uh, for example, even add kind of a, a splay down at the uh, bottom of the stair, just just for the, the heck of it. Um, and, you know, if you're actually uh, designing, sometimes it's nice to lay these things out in advance, um, just so you don't kind of get into some pretty wacky um, things. But, uh, you know, it, it's also okay to just kind of experiment as you go. Here we go. Very nice. Um, you know, you can try to, try to, Try to get this thing to align here, and eh, whatever. All right, it's close enough. Now, um, uh, so that is creating kind of the boundary, um, and, and you can really have a lot of fun with that. Um, to draw the risers, um, you click on the riser um, tool, okay? And these risers, uh, same thing, they can be uh, straight lines or they can be arcs, okay? You know, so uh, I'll draw this one this way. Um, to give myself a little, I don't know, fun here at the bottom. Um, just be aware that these do have to uh, meet the boundaries, um, so you can get into some trouble um, if the if the risers don't, um, uh, you know, kind of meet uh, the the boundary lines. But um, I think we'll be okay here. So and I'll just I'll just begin by um, you know drawing one straight across. You know, typically they're going to be parallel, but again, you know, knock yourself out. Um, and I'll use some of the editing tools here to help me out. Um, offset is a good one. Uh, where's offset? There's offset. Uh, and I, I may have mentioned earlier, 
the editing commands in Revit uh, are all very, very similar to AutoCAD and to a lesser extent SketchUp. Um, there's an offset tool where you can define the distance of the offset, and then you just move your mouse over the object that you want to offset. Um, there also is an array tool, um, but what it does, uh, it, it works basically the same way as um, the AutoCAD array tool does. Um, however, uh, it, it turns the copies into groups, okay? There's other things, scale, um, trim, extend. These are all very similar to AutoCAD. There's even a join element. This works great with walls um, that you want to meet, okay? Rotate, move, copy. Uh, and I believe we've also seen the align tool. So a lot of really handy tools when you're kind of uh, creating something new. Anyway, I'm just gonna use offset here a bunch of times. Uh, let's see how many, it's telling me how many um, I've created here, how many risers. So maybe I'll go kind of halfway up and then we'll have a little landing wherever that happens to, to fall. Let me see, it does help to be able to see how many you've created. All right, there we go. And we'll just have a funky shaped um, landing. Uh, let's give it at least uh, 44 inches. Okay, and then we'll go back to making this 11 inches. Okay, and that's just so the, the landing size is, is uh, whoops. Uh, you can't have, ooh, there we go. You can't have lines uh, overlapping um, so I, I accidentally created a, a copy going the wrong direction. Um, that will absolutely cause Revit to have a, have a cow, okay? So anyway, let me uh, keep going with my risers and I'll just create the last bunch here. Um, two remaining, one, zero. Now, um, you might say, is there gonna be a problem because my boundary is um, uh, not reaching the end riser? Um, I think there can be. I'm actually not sure, <laughs> but uh, we'll just stretch these boundary lines beyond where they are, and I think we should be okay. Do is draw the stair path. Um, this basically just tells Revit um, which direction the stair is going, and uh, this can be changed, of course, but um, uh, you know it's not um, uh, something that we uh, typically you want to get it right the first time. If you leave it out, Revit will will just kind of guess. Anyway, you want to start at the very bottom uh, and draw this line all the way to the top. And it, and it should interpolate, you know, everything that you've done, including sketching the landing. Um, and uh, let's take a look and see what this... Um, so you can see it, you know, it occasionally will have some problems um, figuring out uh, where things go, getting the railings just right. Um, but uh, for the most part, um, even with a lot of very strange curves, um, Revit is able to um, create the stair. It should behave like uh, any other stair. It should be an object that you can select and you can, you can kind of swap the uh, direction of it. Um, uh, it's just that when you edit it, uh, you will be taken back to that um, uh, uh, temporary uh, editing mode where um, you, will, you will have to modify individual lines. Okay, so uh, what if you wanted a wall underneath the stair, particularly um, for low sections of the stair where um, you, you don't want people walking under there, you know, you're limited by code for uh, how uh, minimum head height that you have to have. Um, and to do that, uh, it's pretty straightforward, uh, well, sort of straightforward. Um, first of all, you need to draw a wall, some kind of wall. Uh, let me just let Revit save itself here. Um, and uh, this wall is going to uh, not want to be particularly tall, so I'm just going to draw um, a short section of wall. Uh, and of course, it's, it's going to want to align with the uh, stair itself, so you know, you're going to want to draw it near to the stair. Um, and, and I'll probably just use the align tool and click that and then click that. And there we go. We have a nice wall, um, which, you know, you can continue to uh, whoops, to modify after the fact. All right. I'm not going to do the whole thing because uh, because of the zigzagging that I have created here, um, which is kind of funky. Um, I would need multiple uh, walls under the stair. Um, each one I would have to kind of trim to the um, shape of the stair. Um, and let's go to a section view where we can see the um, uh, wall. 
on the side of the stair. Oh yeah, very nice. Okay. A lot of stuff going on in this section. Um, anyway, so the basic idea here, I'm going to stretch this wall up. Um, you have to be in an orthographic view where you see the wall and the stair, and you're just basically going to change the profile of the stair to match the wall. Okay, and how do you do that? Well, uh, there's a tool. You got it. Um, it's called uh, Edit Profile. Okay, you just uh, click on Edit Profile, and what you can do uh, when you have uh, Edit Profile active is, is you can basically just uh, literally redraw the edge of it. Um, I, in this case, I think I'm, it's easier to just delete some of these lines and then I'm going to come in with my drawing tools. Now, there are a number of drawing tools, uh, lines, arcs, etc. There's also this pick lines tool, which allows you to pick lines in the model. Um, Revit will kind of guess as to which lines uh, you're thinking about. Okay, you see how it, it kind of didn't guess the, the correct one there? I can just nudge that over. And the, the, you know, typically the subtleties here don't matter quite so much um, because uh, most of this is going to be hidden. In fact, um, you know, you, you'll want to make sure that when you do this, you, that it looks right. That's the main thing. Um, anyway, I'm going to trim up these corners here by just uh, using, you guessed it, the trim tool. Well, I guess that is trimmed. There we go, do that. And uh, now when you click uh, the finish edit mode, what you'll see is a wall with a funny profile to it. I'm just going to hide the stair for a second. And you should see a, a funny shaped wall. Okay, so that's a really great way to um, create some, uh, you know, shapes. And you can do this with walls that are arcing in plan. Um, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, have a wall base like this one does. Um, again, as, as you tri uh, trim it, um, all sorts of different um, effects will happen. You will lose the connection if it's attached at the top um, or the base. Uh, profile editing technique, by the way, can be used when, remember when we were creating our custom uh, uh, storefront um, system here, um, or a curtain wall system, you can actually edit the profile of a curtain wall. Um, it, you know, it can lead to some problems. Now watch what happens when I change this boundary. It's going to tell me um, the constraints are no longer satisfied, and it's because curtain wall boundaries are typically locked. So, um, but just tell it, remove constraints, the lock goes away. We could even uh, do this edge here. Again, when you drag it, it will, it will have a heart attack. No, it will, it will, uh, we need to unlock it here. It should allow us to do it. And when I click the checkbox, what's really cool is not only does it um, remake the curtain wall, um, but it adds the um, boundary um, in the correct manner. We just need to edit the profile, oops, wrong profile, um, edit the uh, opening profile here um, for our uh, wall. Let's see if we can grab that. Um, uh, by the way, if you're having trouble grabbing something, I mentioned the technique where you hit tab um, and it will uh, tell you um, what, uh, what you're tabbing over. So now I've gotten the boundary. You can also use this technique where you just draw a, either a selection window um, or a crossing window and then filter it. And I'm going to just check none and see if I can find the opening that way. Sometimes that's the best way, because you see there's a lot of different pieces um, that are visible in the drawing. Sometimes there's just so many that um, Revit just basically doesn't know what to do. So anyway, uh, once you have um, that uh, visible, you should be able to um, edit the uh, opening. Oh, except this is a rectangular opening. We'd have to create an irregular opening in this particular wall. Here, I suppose I could just delete that one. Uh, very helpful in this view um, to to get these windows we can kind of see them uh, we should make this uh, wireframe view and now we can see them and the trick is we can no longer use the uh, wall opening tool um, just because that only creates rectangular openings and the opening by face can be a little tricky um, just Revit sometimes has trouble finding it in these flat views but what we can do let's see if we can select the wall now I'm going to use my uh, a mouse over a door frame and just keep hitting tab until it says wall, which it does. So there we go. I think I've got it selected. Um, 
And uh, then what I can do is edit the profile of that wall. Okay, so this is the back wall. It is going to remove the top and base constraints, but so I'll have to make sure that those don't, um, that it's not poking through the roof um, or some other problem. Um, but uh, anyway, and in fact, I think it is going to cause a problem because this back wall should, in fact, go all the way up to the roof. So we should make sure it does that. Um, but then the other thing is uh, now because we are, um, whoops, remove constraints, um, we can uh, draw this profile um, just uh, using um, lines here. Um, and let's just, uh, we can use the pick lines tool, and this is especially good if you have a, you know, a kind of unusual boundary. Just be aware, see how it doesn't find that angled line? Um, it, it's not a, a perfect um, uh, solution, so you'll have to just come in and, and kind of, I don't know, manually isn't the right word, but you'll, you'll have to draw them um, kind of one by one which is fine, clean them up a little bit. It does have to be a continuous loop with no little bits left hanging over, okay? And uh, just choose unjoin elements. And like magic, we should have our wall um, back in all its glory, our window wall back in all its irregular glory. Uh, now that we have our beautiful stair, we have a lovely uh, wall angled to fit under the stair. How do we create the opening from the second floor that will allow us to see in? Well, we've done this before, right? We had a rectangular opening, in it, but it was easy before. We just had walls to go by. Now what we need to do, we need to see this stair. See how as I mouse over it, it highlights it, but then it goes away when I move my mouse. Um, I can change my visual style to have this kind of x-ray effect. Um, using wireframe. Okay, it's just a quick change. Grab it from that little uh, sugar cube shaped icon down at the bottom. Uh, and there's my beauty. Okay, so we've uh, completed our stair. We've got a lovely wall underneath it. We just need to create an opening for the stair in the second floor. Um, and like we did before, um, we can create uh, either a um, uh, an opening by face, which is kind of my default easiest one to do. Um, you can also use a vertical opening, um, which does basically the same thing, um, or a shaft opening. And a shaft opening is great when you have um, ceilings in that space that you want to cut through also, so you have multiple elements. They can be a little tricky to use, but they're great for these multi-story um, stairs as well. All right, so, uh, but I'm just going to go with opening by face because it's the easiest um, and it will create an opening uh, that is in whatever face I click on. Now, the trick is making sure you get the um, floor selected. You really do have to be able to see um, the edge of the floor in order to select it. So I'm going to zoom out to the, um, uh, to the perimeter here. And you see how once I've got it, it goes into sketch mode. Um, but in, the, the problem is, where's the where are those stairs? We don't have walls to go by this time. So uh, I'm going to go with this wireframe option. Okay, and now I can kind of see through everything. So these these graphic um, uh, visual styles can can help you out um, when you're trying to find things. Um, uh, anyway, wireframe is great, um, and like before, we can draw lines, and we can either uh, draw them kind of uh, freehand, um, you know, drawing over elements as we see fit. Um, whoa, zooming the other wrong way. Um, or we can use the uh, pick line feature. Um, sometimes the pick line feature doesn't always work um, when you have kind of a lot of uh, lines in the drawing. Okay. Uh, but here, let's give it a try uh, using pick lines. And like magic, see, it, it has a little trouble finding that edge um, because there are so many lines. So uh, I finally ended up just drawing all the boundary lines um, using sketch lines. And, you know, don't forget, you do need to figure out if um, you're going to have head clearance um, wherever you're placing this opening. Okay, uh, so now when I go back, I'll go to uh, shaded mode. Um, and you can see that um, it's pretty clear where the second floor is um, and where the railings are um, for the, the stair coming up. So I think, I think we're good. Now, the last uh, part is uh, we're landing up here on the second floor. 
And again, you're going to be coming up with your own design for your stair, so where it lands will be um, different. Um, you do need to make sure um, that there's enough clearance, um, particularly in this case, um, we uh, have a uh, fire stair here um, with no doors in it. I guess we should add some doors in there. Let me come in and add some doors. Add a uh, door. Well, we'll add a door directly into the fire stair. Okay, like so. Okay, and this area here can be a uh, storage. Um, you want to make sure you'll have enough clearance around all those other elements. You'll also want to make sure that you um, have a railing around the top of the stair. Um, if you think about it, uh, let's go to our 3D view here, and we'll take a look at um, what we have wrought with this stair. Um, let me just spin the model around. You can see that there is an opening here into the first floor, and um, you would easily uh, fall right off the edge um, of the stair if, um, uh, if if you left it open like that. Okay, so uh, let's go back to uh, level two, and we'll add a uh, floor plan. Uh, sorry, a uh, floor um, uh, uh, railing in here. Um, and the way that you do that is, you guessed it, the railing um, tool creates, uh, this creates a railing um, wherever you happen to sketch it, okay? Um, there are a couple of um, uh, railing options, by the way. You can uh, create a railing on a sloped um, stair or ramp um, if you need to. Um, otherwise, um, it's just going to go on the path on whatever work plane you happen to be on, okay? And you can set this work plane um, for wherever you want, um, so if you wanted a railing on, say, a roof or something like that, but we, we don't want a railing on a roof. We just want to sketch it along the edge here. And again, you can use the pick lines feature, or you can just um, sketch it using lines. Um, and I will just sketch it here for the sake of simplicity. Oh, except I, I'm not chaining these together here. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then you just click the checkbox. And like magic, you have a um, handrail. Uh, let's take a look and see what that looks like uh, from the ground floor. So uh, you can see here, we've got the railing. It doesn't quite match perfectly um, with the edge of the railing coming up from below, um, but you can see that it, it more or less matches. Um, each railing is slightly different as far as where it's placed. Um, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the line that you draw. Um, so you'll, you'll want to uh, check and make sure that the, the railing isn't kind of overhanging the opening. Uh, anyway, and there's my doors, and here's my beautiful um, uh, 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 decal that I placed on the wall. By the way, when you're in a perspective view, you can use the same shift and click-drag your scroll wheel to orbit the model. Um, and this is great if you want to kind of uh, tweak your view, um, or if you just want to look around. You can also use the view cube um, or the steering wheel, um, and either of those will uh, allow you to modify your view. Okay, um, so that is making a custom stair. Now, uh, what else do we want to do? We would um, probably, uh, at this point, like to talk about using, uh, creating new furniture. And uh, there are a number of sources uh, that, that I think we've talked about in class um, for getting free models. Um, you know, of course, there's uh, Revit City and there's BIMobjects.com and, and some, some uh, you know, vigorous Google searching will probably get you um, some nice results. But um, what if you just want to make a new um, seat for yourself um, in your project? Um, I'm going to start by just uh, showing you how to draw some basic elements. Um, I, I will admit that I find I, I prefer to create things in SketchUp because I'm faster at it. Um, and you can create more uh, kind of elaborate things um, in SketchUp. There are some issues with SketchUp models, though, um, that uh, make it sometimes uh, a little challenging um, to get them to render when you're in Revit, but usually they work pretty well. Um, so uh, let me go to a, a view that's uh, easy to work with. I'm going to go to the default um, view and uh, the default uh, axonometric view. 
Um, and there are certain uh, basic shapes that you can draw in Revit. And again, it's not the uh, best modeling tool in the world, which is why when you go to Revit City, most of the components look a little boxy. And it's because of this um, limitation. So uh, first of all, um, if you uh, go and you want to create a component um, that doesn't exist yet, you can choose uh, the simplest option here, which is model in place. Okay, and this is, I, I believe, what we did for our ceilings uh, when we wanted to create some custom ceilings, um, or not. Um, anyway, uh, when you choose that option, uh, there are all sorts of different things that you can create. And you might say, well, why does Revit even care what kind of thing it is? SketchUp doesn't care. Um, it's because Revit categorizes everything. Um, it kind of keeps track of things using um, what essentially is a layering system. And that's what you see when you click on the visibility and graphic overrides uh, tool. So if you want to create a piece of furniture, not a bad idea to just tell Revit um, it's a piece of furniture. Okay, It is um, certainly possible to create a mass, which is just stuff, um, which won't show up on schedules and things like that. But And, and, and we won't be doing any schedules uh, this semester, but if you ever were to create a schedule, you'd like it, uh, the furniture to show up. All right, so I'll create, uh, click OK. Um, you can even call it, uh, you know, bench seat, you know, whatever, bench seat. Um, and uh, you will go into um, kind of a sketch mode. Um, and uh, like we did before, uh, when we've created other objects, everything gets a little gray. Uh, and basically, there are several kinds of standard uh, forms that you can create um, in this sketch mode. These are all what are known as masses. Um, in this case, they're being defined as a piece of furniture. Um, and some of them are pretty, you know, straightforward in terms of what they are called. Um, I'll, I'll kind of go through each one just to show you um, what they look with. A uh, simple one, an extrusion. Okay, I'll click the extrusion tool. Now, the trick is when you're drawing um, objects, uh, masses, uh, you do want to tell Revit where they're going to go. Uh, and this is called setting the work plane. Um, and we've seen this with a number of other things where, like the railings where you can define where they're going to go, they're, they're kind of host. So I'm going to click set work plane. And it will give me a couple of options. First of all, I, if there are uh, reference planes that are uh, available for um, kind of drawing and plan, it will pick that. So I can just choose level two, okay? I could also pick a plane and click okay. And uh, as I mouse over a plane, it will allow me to draw in those planes, okay? Kind of SketchUp style, all right? Now, uh, let me uh, click this again and, and I'll, just, I'll just pick uh, level two to be sure that I get the right one. Okay, so now I'm drawing on the floor here, and an extrusion is basically just a shape that you draw, okay, and um, you can tell it how big the extrusion is kind of in advance by typing in a number, okay, um, well, or uh, I'll just click the checkbox here to finish editing it. You uh, will have these um, adjusters here later on, these kind of grips. Um, that will allow you to change it. Obviously, once you do that, you start to lose some of the um, dimensionality uh, that you had when you were able to type in a number, but um, often you can come back in and uh, type in a number, and uh, Revit will be more than happy to comply with um, what you're doing. So that's an extrusion. Uh, I'm just going to delete that guy um, and go back to the Create uh, menu here. Um, and uh, show you um, uh, what a sweep is, okay? A sweep, uh, and I'll, you know, let the little video run, but basically you draw a path and you draw a profile, and then Revit will kind of extrude that um, uh, shape along the profile, okay? Or along the path. So uh, the first thing you do is you sketch a path. Um, again, you'll probably wanna set the work plane. I think it's still set to level two. Um, any tool will do. I'll just draw something simple here for our diagram, okay? Um, and uh, when you've done, when you're done drawing the path, uh, click finish that, uh, finish it. Um, and then you can choose um, edit profile, okay? And what you'll see here, it's a little hard uh, with the uh, gray. Let me make my um, 
uh, view hidden line. Um, you can see there's a, a, a kind of double uh, uh, axis here. That is a reference plane which will allow you to draw um, uh, kind of perpendicular to the path. And you can draw any, anything you want. You can sketch lines. It just has to be a closed loop. Anyway, uh, now I will click uh, Finish. Um, and it might say, you know, uh, you might say, what if I wanted to do something like um, a wall base or a handrail? Well, all those profiles that we've uh, loaded in earlier for wall base um, and others that you can get will show up here if you happen to want to draw one in a custom way. Anyway, I'll, I'll just click Finish Edit Mode, and now I have this lovely um, mass here uh, kind of sitting um, halfway through the floor, which is kind of silly. But anyway, um, you can uh, also unglue it from the uh, work plane um, and try to move it around, although this one is not working. So anyway, there you go. There's uh, a uh, swept blend. Um, there is also or a sweep. There is a blend, which, um, as the video shows you, allows you to create two profiles kind of connected to each other. Um, in this case, let's say we draw a top that is a circle. Okay. And um, now we'll choose uh, edit base and we can draw the base, some other shape. Okay. And then we click the checkbox and like magic, you have a funky shape. And again, there are these draggers which allow you to um, uh, modify the shape in a number of ways. Okay. So that is a blend, I guess, because you're blending two different shapes. You can also do a swept blend, which, uh, you know, as you get more complicated here, um, you can draw a path like we did before, and then you can edit um, both the front and the end profile. Okay. Uh, a little more elaborate than I'm uh, going to do right now. Um, and then, uh, oh, except I, I want to stop creating my swept blend. Um, finally, let's go back to create. Um, there's something called a revolve, okay? And a revolve, you draw a line around which um, some shape is going to um, be drawn, okay? So I'll click revolve. I'll uh, draw the, um, the boundary line is basically, uh, here, I'll draw a shape. Oh, and I'm not sure which plane I'm in right now. So maybe uh, we better pick a plane. Okay. And we'll draw it uh, in this plane so that I'm drawing vertically. And now I'll draw a shape. Okay. There we go. We'll draw the axis line. The axis line does not have to be on the shape. Okay. Remember, we're drawing up in space here. If I were to rotate this model, you see how it's it's parallel to the face of that column. Okay, um, and then uh, you uh, there are other options. Uh, for example, you, it doesn't have to be a 360 degree um, rotation, but that's the most common. So anyway, we'll click the checkbox, and we have created a funky lampshade or something like that. Okay, and again, if you don't like the way it's looked uh, looking, you can double click on it and get back into the mode where you're editing the profile and the axis. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, get rid of that. Cancel the model here. Oh, actually, no, I'm not gonna cancel the model. I'm gonna just delete this thing. Um, if you wanted to make a, a very simple bench, Okay, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, most benches are kind of rectilinear. So um, you could easily just kind of, oh, except I'm, I'm drawing up in outer space, aren't I? Let me set the work plane. Yep, <laughs> it's drawing on a column. Uh, let's set it back to level two and okay. And you know, bench is pretty small. So I'll just come in here real close and um, draw a rectangle on the floor. You know, maybe it's... Uh, two by two. Okay. Uh, by the way, if your line weights are starting to get a little heavy, it may be the scale of the view. If you make the scale bigger, and again, there's a, a button down here that reads the scale out, you can just pick another scale. Okay. I'll go with the next scale up quarter inch. Um, when you start drawing small stuff, that can be a real problem. Okay. So I can draw this guy as an uh, extrusion. What am I drawing here? An extrusion? I'm not even sure. 
yeah, extrusion. Um, however tall your bench seating is, maybe 18 inches, um, click the checkbox. And what's nice, this is an object that um, you can copy. Okay, so I can copy it over uh, whatever distance I want. Um, and in fact, I can copy these legs at the same time by just holding down control. Um, and you know, make it as long as you feel uh, feel like you'd like to do. Use the um, references to uh, draw things horizontally to each other. Okay. And what's cool is if you want to draw just a, you know a simple top to it, um, all you have to do is uh, uh, set the um, work plane. Okay. Choose Edit Work Plane, and you can pick a plane. Okay. And I'll pick the top of this column. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, I was changing the work plane of these guys. I don't want to do that. I'll finish these guys. Uh, oops. Oh, let me come back here and um, re-edit this thing here. Um, and we'll create another extrusion right on top of these. Now I'll set the work plane to be the top of these posts. Okay. I can draw my shape in here. Right. And you see how it's drawing on the top of these little fellas here. Okay. And you can ex uh, set the extrusion uh, dimension to whatever you want, two or three inches, I suppose. Apply. Okay. And then click the checkbox. All right. And there you go. That's a really simple um, thing to do. In fact, um, if you want a little bit of an overhang to your bench, you can just use these draggers to um, drag it out. Okay. Or you can um, obviously set the dimension in plan if you're uh, in uh, a more precise mode. Um, not the most beautiful thing in the world, of course. Um, so there's a number of things that you can do. Um, uh, but let's say we want to add um, a cushion on top of this. Well, you know, maybe that is the kind of thing we're going to want to create um, maybe a sweep. Okay. Um, and what this will do, we can draw the sweep um, and I'm going to pick the path. Let's see if it can find the path. Oh yeah, look at that. Very smart Revit. And I just drew this uh, rounded uh, profile just to, just to give me a little bit of a, of a kind of softening um, of my um, edge. And I'll edit, uh, exit the um, editing mode. And like magic, we have, uh, you know, relatively soft um, uh, feature. There's, there's more that you can add to this. Let me just finish that up. Um, and uh, there's a number of things that we can do, including adding um, parameters and adding materials to this. But um, this is really the, uh, the basics, is these model in place um, uh, items. Uh, let's go back to realistic view. For now, there are no materials. Um, I'm going to save that uh, whole conversation um, for a different lecture. But um, uh, needless to say that you can create um, really nice um, features uh, just by um, some simple uh, model in place things. Another example of that um, is around our, our rabbit. Where's our rabbit? Oh, there's our nice rabbit. I like our rabbit. Um, you know, maybe we want to create um, a picture frame for our rabbit here. Let me just get him out of the way for the sec uh, moment. Um, and to create a picture frame, um, you just uh, basically do the same thing we did before, component, model in place. And again, there, you don't have to do it this way, but this is, this is kind of the most immediate way. Um, uh, I'm going to consider a, a, a picture frame a piece of furniture. Okay. And we can all even call it picture frame one. All right. Um, and let's set our work plane to be this vertical wall. And again, this is just a real quick and dirty. Um, in fact, you can probably um, draw um, a sweep, but uh, what I'll show you, um, uh, uh, kind of a multiple thing here, um, I can draw an extrusion, and here we'll use the shape of the rabbit. Um, as a, an example, but I'm, I'm going to move those lines over so that they're um, not in the way of the rabbit here. Okay. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to um, offset that about uh, uh, three inches and I'm going to make myself a little, little frame. Okay. All right. So um, now uh, I have two sets of loops here. 
Um, so I, I have kind of a, a frame with a little bit of depth, okay? There are still these draggers here, these uh, grips, which will allow me to adjust the um, object. You can also, by the way, create um, uh, a, uh, uh, an internal um, piece here, uh, a little mass inside this guy. Uh, again, create, extrusion, and I'm just going to, I'm still drawing on this back wall. Oops, except I want to draw a rectangle. Okay, and give that, instead of uh, three inches of extrusion, we'll give it one inch, and this will make it appear as if the um, uh, uh, there's a little bit of a back to the painting. So let me finish that. There's my beautiful picture frame. And now um, I can create uh, another uh, rabbit. Um, I don't believe you can rehost a, a rabbit. Mm, no, it doesn't seem to be a rehost option. So I'll just create another one. Um, and Revit will detect this surface. Whoops, just placed it on there. Um, and now the, the, the new rabbit, <laughs> the bigger rabbit, looks like he's right inside of a picture frame. Okay. And when you render it, it'll, first of all, the frame will give you a little bit of a shadow. Um, and uh, also it will just look um, a little uh, kind of neater. Um, one thing you can do, by the way, when you have multiple objects that are kind of meant to go together, is you can select them and create a group, okay? Um, and you, the example here is like a toilet fixture um, with a door and a wall, um, but in this case, we just have um, the picture frame, you know, picture frame with rabbit. And as your uh, models get more and more complicated, it is, in fact, a good idea to give these things a name. Uh, I can't tell you how after a while you end up with, with an awful lot of um, different models. Now, uh, the only problem with doing it this way is that, of course, now we're stuck with this size of the picture. Oops, and sometimes you end up with the picture moving on you. Maybe I missed, missed it in my, my group. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, here, we'll move it back for the time being. Um, so do be careful about that, okay? Uh, sometimes you might want a picture to be bigger, depending on the artist that you've created. It, it would be nice if you could actually make the images the size of the original artwork. Um, but uh, this is a way that you can create some pretty simple um, flat uh, images um, from your uh, artist.